This is Wednesday, my dudes. At least I'm wearing pink. A few months ago, I discovered a dusty, crusty, prehistoric stash of unlabeled and half-devoured acrylic yarns, to which the whys, whens, hows, and whos I, to this day, cannot remember. But alas, it was a candy cane palette, and four words sprung to mind. You go, Glen Coco. Because I'm going to make a Mean Girls Jingle Bell Rock inspired Christmas outfit. Seriously. What else could I have done with this amount of yarn in these specific colours? Well, I can think of. And hey, a little Christmas cheer wouldn't hurt either. In case you watched my last video, you now know what those gloves were for. Welcome back. I first had to figure out the tension and gauge. I put on 24 stitches because I thought this was a DK yarn. You can see that I hit 10 centimeters by 18 stitches. But if I compare this yarn with the iron weight yarn that I had for my fisherman sweater, with the DK yarn that I use for my t-shirt, you can see that these two are more similar this 4mm needle is probably the right needle. To proceed, I then used my new findings to calculate the number of stitches needed for the hem, based on a mid-rise waist measurement taken from the stand. Like in my previous tank top video, I wanted to knit this all in the round from the bottom up, because seaming is synonymous with I don't want to. So, using the magic loop, because these circular needles are longer than required at 150cm, I began to knit in simple stockinette. Question. Does anyone else find every excuse possible to knit stockinette in the round because even the mere thought of knitting it flat just sends you into a mini rage because can't relate something felt nostalgic about knitting with an acrylic yarn this bright shade of red it reminded me of childhood of knitted toys and the soft fuzzy squeakiness against the needles was undeniably comforting yet simultaneously sending shivers down my spine that sounds about right anyway i reverted back to the highly dependable fold over for the hem because i didn't want to deal with the fallout of trying to block a curling acrylic one. I then started to shape the round in the same way as many of my previous projects. I used knit together and SSK decreases up the sides until reaching the waist. Followed by make one increases for the rest of the tube. Everything appeared to fit perfectly. Almost too perfectly. Ah yes, the too much gene had been activated. She doesn't even go here. This is definitely too big. Naturally, the only two options I had in this case were as follows. Number one, unravel several rounds and start over. Or number two, continue as is, factoring in some cosmetic enhancements that may require several weeks if not months of recovery. I wasn't really expecting that. It was a tough call, but St. Nicholas waits for no one. If you're wondering why this vest is looking more like a coke bottle than a wearable garment, the answer is yes. And yes, this is the altered version. Obviously, since knit is stretchy, angles this sharp aren't that necessary, and a straight tube would have sufficed if done to the right measurement. However, I like to have at least some resistance in my projects to help keep boredom at bay. And the truth is that the flaring should actually make for a looser and more comfortable fit, in theory, and depending on which way you look at it. Upon reaching the desired length, or height, I began to cast off the back, and then built the front up some more until reaching a neckline that looked about right. This is the back, and this is the front, and you can tell because the front is a lot taller than the back. So now what I'm going to do is cast off the front, and then I can get started on the straps. Now that the body was finished, I was really looking forward to the next part, and that was the I-cord edging and straps. Remember this isn't attached yet, but just for the sake of this demonstration, it is. So I'm going to start knitting the I-cord, and then after I reach this point, I'm going to knit it into the vest, like so. I'm going to continue and knit all the way around to the other side, and then I'm going to knit the remainder of the I-cord, which is basically the second strap, and then it will attach into the back of the vest. Thank you for watching my TED talk. Now, I very much doubt that I'm the first person ever to incorporate an I-cord onto a strappy top in this precise fashion, especially on a first-time project, but every now and then, it's just nice to feel like you came up with something, because after all, trying to be original in this post-postmodern era is like trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen.
This is my first time making an eye cord, so let's just see how it goes. I think it's a bit too thin for my project, and I'm gonna change this into a five stitch eye cord instead. I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it's a better size than the three stitch eye cord. I thought I was using the yarn end from the outside, not from the center. Like, okay, where? This is Wednesday, my dudes. If this level of crunchy doesn't scream homemade, then the limit does not exist. Yes, I am aware that these references are giving I can't believe this movie came out 18 years ago. This might be my last chance to make them. Now all that was left was the fur trimming. But how? I already had a few caveats. Them being that only the existing acrylic yarn could be used. I genuinely even considered crocheting a snowflake collar. Like, how cute, I mean fetch, would that be? But not only would that mean far more planning, I also wanted to keep this top knit only. And then I remembered the loop stitch I came across recently. It looked like a fun stitch that was thirsty for yarn, and that was exactly what I was looking for. The only potential issue was that I hadn't seen examples of it with longer loops, and the shorter loops were giving more shag carpet than fur trim. Of course, there was only one thing to do. Like one may throw pieces of a plastic tiara into a crowd, one may also throw caution to the wind. This stitch is, in theory, a lot simpler than it looks, but there was a bit of alternating required, and and it took a couple of attempts and full concentration. Frogging was also kind of scary. Limited by the laws of physics, I had to do some weird flippity doodah and work on the right side to avoid showing an unsightly seam at the top. This meant that all of the loops were falling upwards instead of downwards, and I was really hoping that blocking could save this if needed, but it was hard to tell. I decided to vary the sizes of the loops to create a more, shall we say, organic feel to the overall texture, and it was good enough for me. I had a feeling that making everything uniform, although neat and very tempting, may have been a little too type A for the vibe. I was going for DIY faux fur trim by the yard, not 20s flapper glam. After reaching the desired length, I stitched down the sides, and that was it. A few more stitches here and there, and there we have it. In terms of construction and execution, I would say that this is my favourite out of the two tank tops I've made, which would make sense. I learned a lot from the first one. It used up almost half of the total yarn, which is even more than first estimated. This may or may not be a good thing. Since the outfit is only partially complete, I hope you'll join me next time for the making of the skirt and for the finished outfit reveal. Well, now I've said it, haven't I?